So for those of you who do not know, um, Jonathan Majors, who is an actor, okay, he has been in so many movies, you know, Creed 3 to be for one. It just, the, the, it, there's too long of a list of the amount of movies that he's been in. And, um, you know, he has been under fire recently because of the fact that his um, ex-girlfriend, who is pictured right next to him, has alleged that he, um, you know, physically harmed her. I don't know exactly to the extent that she was stating that he did. But right now, while they're in trial, there are different pieces that are starting to come to the forefront of actually what, you know, was really going on within the realm of their relationship. So in this video, you guys are going to hear the audio um, that has been released in court about a certain altercation that the two of them had where, um, you know, his ex-girlfriend at the time was trying to basically paint the narrative that he was controlling, um, that he was, you know, narcissistic, that he was just a lot of the things that, you know, um, basically just trying to diminish his character, right? To say that he's not a good person, he's not a good human being, um, because she alleged, again, that he physically harmed her only for um, everything to turn around and for police to actually arrest her because of the evidence that they found that it was actually her who was the aggressor. So I want you guys to hear this audio and then I'm going to give you guys my feedback on it as well. Do you understand that? Yeah. Do you really know this? Do you really? Yes. Then how dare you come home drunk and disturb the peace of our house when we have a plan? I'm I, so would like sorry. To get to, I would like to get to the point where your friends know what job I'm on and go, I think Grace is going to be out of commission. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I won't. So, like, I'm, I no, no. Do you understand that? Because cause that team, that unit, right? Grace has to be in a certain mindset to support Coretta Scott King. You know who that is? That's Martin Luther King's wife. Michelle Obama. Barack Obama's wife. I know, I'm not, I, I, I shouldn't have gone out. I'm no, no, sorry. Let me, just, let me just lay it out for you. Right? If I am, I'm just going to say this. So I'm going to pause it right here and then I'm going to play the rest of the audio. But I just wanted to give my feedback on this first portion of the conversation. First of all, if you're if you are getting into some kind of um, disagreement with your spouse, my first initial thoughts when I heard this audio is when did you have time to pull out a phone and why? Like, was this something that you were recording to put in your back pocket, hoping that you'd be able to use it against him somehow? Is this something that you would do, like, when you guys would get into a disagreement, you would record the audio so you could send to everybody else and say, see, listen how crazy he is. And, and you're only playing the snippets of certain conversations to make yourself look a certain light? To make you look like this defensive, defenseless, you know, wounded bird that just got into a certain situation and, oh, my gosh, you just need coddling and consoling? Because that's what it seems like. Because to me... Based off of the first part of this conversation that I'm hearing, this sounds like a very regular conversation to be had. And it, it basically shows the state of mind that you were in. This man, you know, he sounds very logical. OK, he's standing there very bold faced, And he said very clearly, how dare you walk up into my home, our home, disturbing our peace of our home. Because you are so drunk and intoxicated. How dare you? The two of us are on a mission. We have goals. We have plans. You are representing me when you go outside and you come inside acting a fool. That's not going to fly here. You know, and, and I don't understand why she played this or why she put this. And she says she, you know, she tried to say, oh, you know, he tried to tell me that I need to be like Coretta Scott King and and, and Martin Luther King, um, you know, Martin Luther King's wife and Michelle Obama. And, you know, he's trying to make me to be somebody else. And, you know, there were a lot of black women who were taking that and run with it just because of, you know, this woman's skin color. But the way that I, you know, from my viewpoint, he is just referencing Women who he feels that were standing in a great, uh, you know, uh, a great role representing their man to their best ability, great support system. These women who were standing there with dignity, pride, self-respect, honorable women that he can think of off the top of his head to say, you know, these are great men who were in a certain position and their women had no problem falling in line. 
What's the problem with you? I, I don't believe that he was looking at this woman telling her, you know, you need to be like a black woman. I don't think that's what he was getting at. I think he was saying you need to take a page out of somebody somebody's book. I can only reference the two people that I that, that first come to my mind, but you need to stand into a, a place that you can understand that if there is going to be a great man, who is going to be the balance for that man? And whatever woman is the balance for a man who is great or a man who is called to do a lot of things or a man who is who is of a certain uh, level. You need to find out what those traits are and mirror them. Because that's what I'm expecting of you. I'm expecting a spouse that can be the proper balance for me. I'm expecting a, a spouse that's going to be able to support me. That is going to be able to represent me well. That I'm not going to have to check about coming in drunk in the middle of the night. That's what I'm expecting of you. To me, this sounds like a man who is laying down the law. You can either get with it or get lost, but this is what uh, this is what it is. This is what I stand for. This is my standard. And what does she do? She's sniffling, <laughs> sniffling, crying, snot nose, recording. Uh, but I said I was sorry. But I, you're right. I shouldn't have gone out. That's not the point. The point is not even the fact that you shouldn't have gone out. The point is not, you know, you trying to say, oh, you know, I just can't do anything. I'm just bound to this relationship. I just, I can't, I can't even make moves without him being upset with me. You're deflecting. You're focusing on the fact that you went out and you feel some type of way and not focusing on what he clearly stated, which was that you came home intoxicated. You came home and disturbed the peace of our home. You know the stuff that I'm focused on. You know the plans that I have. You know the visions that we're, we're supposed to be aligning ourselves with and all of your actions are not um, conducive to the lifestyle that we're trying to be leading. So if you're not on the train... You know, from his point of view, if you're not on the train, you're against the train. You're contrary to the movements that are conducive to what we're trying to do here, what we're trying to build. And I'm going to call you out, uh, out about that. A lot of women try to, you know, cry. They try to, you know, oh, oh my God, you know, damsel in distress. They try to deflect. They try to point the blame at somebody else or something else. They try to gather a crowd around like she's doing. They record the situation, try to gather a crowd to to uh, make them feel better about their decisions or make them feel like, you know, they're just so, um, you know, needy. Oh, I just can't believe he made me feel so bad. I just can't believe he's doing this to me. I'm right, right? I'm not the person that's wrong, right? It's not me who has a problem. It's him, right? Instead of sitting there, listening to your man, communicate to you the issues that he's having with you and being logical enough, coming up out of your emotions because you are you have, you know, the mindset. I would People would say, oh, but, you know, she's intoxicated, but she... Had the wisdom enough to press record. So if that's the case, you should have the wisdom enough to sit there and listen and say, okay, babe, I understand what you're saying. I understand where you're coming from. You're right. I went out. I got intoxicated. I didn't know my limit. I'm tripping. That's messed up. He even stated, you know, it should be a place the, the precedent should be set that her friend should even know, oh, no, you know, he's working on this. He's working on that. She's not going to be able to come out like she used to. We're going to have to chill off of her. He's not even blaming the friends. He's saying it's you. Because there's some spaces that women, you know, their friends are not even hitting them up. They're hitting up their friends. When they know it's contrary to the to, to the vision or the plans uh, of whatever it is that they're building together. They feel like they missing out. They see their friends on social media. They feel like they missing out. Man, I wish I was going out. Man, I'm bored. Man, I can't believe. So if you can't align yourself with the vision. If you can't take heed or, or follow the leadership skills of the man who is leading you. Then you're going to have to keep it pushing. Just come, come up out the way 
so that a woman who has no problem um, being under the regime of this man, a woman who has no problem saying, okay, yeah, the, the level of sacrifice that you're expecting, I'm going to bring that to the table as well. You know, move on out the way so she can come and come get her man, which I think that we might have witnessed that situation already taking place with Miss Megan Good. But I'm going to go ahead and press play so we can hear the continuation of this, um, the audio. My temper, my sh my travel block, all that, all that said, right? And I'm not saying I'm a great man, a great man. I am doing great things, not just for me, but for my, for my culture and for the world. That is actually the position I'm in. That's real. I'm not being a dick about it. I didn't ask for it. I've worked and that's the situation. The woman that supports me, that I support, that we're, that needs to be a great woman and make sacrifices the way that man is making for her and for them, ultimately. I don't see nothing wrong. Okay, again, I don't see nothing wrong. He started this off saying, I'm not a perfect man. I have my own traumas. I have anger issues. I have a temper. You know, I, I am not saying that, that I am perfect and you're imperfect and whatever. I'm just saying that I am in a certain space. I know what I bring to the table. I know what I offer. I know what I represent. I have a duty and a responsibility despite my imperfections. There's people out there who are counting on me. I need you to understand that and be my counterpart. I need you to understand that and support me. I need you to understand that and be my balance. I need you to understand that and not come in in the middle of the night drunk acting a fool. To me, it seems like all he was asking for is a level of understanding in this conversation. All he was asking for was for her to see his point of view. And what's ironic is that, you know, there's there's a lot of women who tend to, uh, you know, support the woman regardless of any situation. But if we were just to flip this role around, OK, and the reason why I say that continuously in a lot of my videos is because I feel like a lot of women don't understand the male's perspective until you flip the story around. Let's flip this around and let's say that, um, you know, this woman had the same exact conversation with her man. I need you to not come in the house drunk at four o'clock in the morning acting a fool. I need you to this and that. You know, people would listen to the audio and say, well, you know, I completely understand where she's coming from. He's the one that's tripping. Oh, he tried it. Why is he recording her? You know, that's narcissistic. That's this, that's that. They would have all the fuel to completely understand and comprehend all the wrongdoings of the man in this party if the man was in the position of this woman. But when we flip it around, all of a sudden they'd be like, well, that's your fault. You shouldn't have picked her. Oh, well, you knew who she was when you got with her. <laughs> Com completely, completely alluding to the fact that, you know, people change. People show you their representative. They show you the best version of themselves. And then all of a sudden, when they feel like they got you, then the real them comes forward and sometimes it does not align uh, with everything that is, uh, you know, attached to the things that you're doing. Sometimes you are growing and the people who are supposed to be growing alongside with you, you know, they out there trying to be willing to They still trying to be outside. We have to be honest about this. This is bigger than just, oh, because she's not this kind of woman. She's not that kind of woman. That's why I have the certain conversations that I have on my platform. Yes, there are certain times that I am talking to just us. And I make that very clear when I'm talking to just us. But across the board, women as a whole are tripping. Women as a whole have this, I got to do bad all by myself mentality. You know, this whole, um, uh, like, uh, the, the culture, especially here, in the West. It's a free for all. So much so that people who are in other countries are taking, you know, a, a page out of the women over here's book and getting themselves into major issues and problems. Because we have this whole, you know, fr you know, do what you got to do. You don't need no man. Men are beneath you. You know, you're better than a man. You're greater than a man. You can challenge a man. They going overseas on vacation from here and getting locked up. 
because they feel like our rules over here and uh, the way that um, women are able to dodge certain uh, consequences over here is supposed to be, you know, that's supposed to last when they go overseas somewhere. And they found out the hard way that that is not true. I think it's so shameful and distasteful that, you know, in this situation that this woman has tried to, you know, diminish his character. She said so many things and just to see it unfold and to see how, you know, this is this is very similar to the Johnny Depp situation where the woman is just out there and saying all these allegations and and relying on the fact that she's a woman that it'd be able to work for her and her benefit and seeing it unfold that the actual evidence is saying otherwise is very interesting to me. It's very interesting. You have people who, you know, have called this man every name in the book based off of her allegations that we have seen turn out to not be true. It's very distasteful. And again, this is not even a man who is saying that he's without spot, that he's perfect. He's that he has literally named his faults. He said he has his own traumas. He has his own problems. He's not saying that he, you know, is above anybody. But he is in, in a certain position and he takes it serious. He has responsibility that he's trying to live up to. And all he's asking for is some understanding. And balance and compromise from her end. I don't see nothing wrong with it. I don't. I think a lot of people, when they start to, you know, go into the, you know, the Coretta Scott King and the Michelle Obama comments and the this and that. To me, that's just all deflection. Because we all understand what he's saying. And if he would have named, you know, an, uh, some other women who were not black women, then black women would still be upset and say, oh, well, you see, how could he name those women and not name black? So it's like you can't please everybody. And again, this is a conversation that he is in the comfort of his own home talking to this woman. He is woman. This is my opinion. OK, this is my opinion. I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you.